you have the floor. Okay, so anyone's not familiar with it already, there's the antitrust policy and the code of conduct policy. Please review it and uh, make sure you follow it. So uh, just following the the basic agenda that I put out last time and going to run through everything. Uh, so first step is the review of what we uh, said we do last meeting. First was a TOC update. Thank you, Rye, for finally actually submitting that uh, uh, for James. The, uh, the outstanding questions, I took a quick look through what it is. Both of them were like grammar and spelling things, I think. Uh, I think all the sort of substantive issues have been reported, but uh, I will take another look at that tonight. What is the, uh, in terms of the process, is it like it has to be a unanimous approve? No. In order for it to get merged? No, usually uh, it's two weeks after submitted if there are any outstanding questions. Uh, one of the larger outstanding questions was the maintainers list is way out of whack. Um, right. So that's, uh, Peter is also on the uh, TOC, so I'll let, let him speak to that. But Peter, was there anything else that you recall from the last TOC meeting about that? Yeah, I think uh, he, someone, I don't remember who it was, but someone brought it up that uh, it seems not very up to date that uh, there were people listed as maintainers who haven't done anything on the project for maybe six months so i think what they were saying is that maybe that could use an update to double check who is still actually active as a maintainer right the so agreed the certainly can be pruned out i think the question a little bit is whether anybody needs to come into as replacements uh, for stuff. Um, the principal sort of active maintainers really are, are Andy yourself and uh, Sean, right? I, I haven't seen very many of the others from the existing list go through and do active reviews of merging. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, we have in the past uh, when someone has asked to be removed, gone through and sent out emails to people um, to ask them if they wanted to be removed. So there's some people on there who have actively said they wanted to stay on um, and sometimes pop up. An example of that is like Sean Montgomery, um, who was very active in the project originally, um, but we haven't done that for a while. Okay. So what should be the process we deal with that in terms of, should we go and do that again, or should we just take it by the, the rule, which, I mean, there is a rule, right, with, of uh, so many months inactive, you're supposed to be, uh, what is it, retired and then and pushed off, or should we go through that process again, see if anybody wants, and then actually it's probably better to actually send out the emails and just ping them and try to get them more involved again, or explicitly out. We'll get, I, I think you just give one more shot. Yeah, if so. To... Sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to say, um, Sean is unfortunately on vacation right now. Um, yeah. That's why he's not on the call. Uh, but we had talked about going, we have um, the maintainer rules in the saw two, I forget what repo it's in, the um, RFT repo. Um, RFC, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's it, sorry. Uh, not fully awake yet. Um, and we had talked about going through and revising that to not only make it um, easier to know when we should retire people, but also make it clearer when we would move someone into maintainer status. Um, mm -hmm. Both of those have been, it's, it's pretty like up to the current maintainer group. So I, obviously as the maintainer group has gotten smaller, that has become a little bit more work um, since we haven't had time to really deal with it recently. Um, so that's one thing is make going into that and updating the rules so that they're really explicit. Um, it would also help us get new more maintainers from the perspective of it's very clear what someone would need to do before we could make them a maintainer. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that yet. 
So what would be the next step? Just we got to wait for Sean to come back to have that discussion and put it forward, or is there something we can do now? I guess that in terms of moving moving things along. When when is uh, Sean due back? Next week. Next week. Okay. I do collect stats on maintainer activity. Um, or actually, I collect stats on all activity. Uh, so it's pretty easy for me to get that data. Um, mm -hmm. I can do it again. Uh, so I'm putting down because uh, I'll, I'll make sure to update notes for this. So we need a, a refresh of the maintainer rules. Rules. We need to do a poll of the existing maintainers. One more thing that I can recommend is if someone wants to stay on, but they haven't done anything in a while, then you could make them maintainer emeritus. And just list yeah. them in the same document, but on a separate list. So that way they do get the credit for life that they've been putting work into the project, which they should. Uh, but at the same time, it's not confusing. It doesn't look like there's a bunch of maintainers when there isn't. Yeah, I actually had a bunch of pull requests to do exactly that uh, a while ago, and they were not received well. So uh, I would like it if instead of removing maintainers inactive ones were moved to emeritus and then uh it makes life a lot easier i mean i would prefer that too right when i see a maintainers list i expect somebody actually to be caretaking the project right yeah and then if you keep their names on there but in the emeritus list i think that's a very reasonable trade-off that they should be everyone should be happy to make their their name is still on there but they're not anymore actively maintaining so if it was me i wouldn't bother too much with the poll either to be honest i would just look at the stats and i would say well, i think right. there's a i think there's a reason to go and 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 at least contact everybody to see if they're willing to come back into the fold and get active on it and maybe even just give an update because it's, it's entirely possible that they just haven't been paying attention to what's happening here. So I think I think it's still worth the effort to go around and see if anyone's still interested in going. If you have the time, then, then sure. Yeah. Time is there to be spent. Uh, OK, the OK, so that's the previous report. Da, 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 da. The next update is due July. Try to do better this time. Um, is it due July or is it due, due August or is it due June? Is it, due, is it already due? You know, I would have to look at the uh, TOC. The last one was for April, so quarterly. So I would assume July. Okay. So uh -huh. uh, I want a volunteer from my guys to help me with the TOC report or anybody else. I have a feeling it's going to fall to me to end up doing it this time. Uh, Mark, you want to help me out with that? Oh, it's basically just a pull request of a markdown document against the uh, against the TOC just to say what's been happening in the project. Okay, it's it's very formulaic, really. Okay. So Sawtooth is July 27th. July 27th. It's been going cold. Okay. All right. So last, uh, so the question is, uh, uh, the main thing I, I wanted to sort of emphasize is in terms of that we messed up last time is that we just sort of dropped the ball and took too long doing it. So I think this time, mainly, I just want to make sure, Mark, you and I will carry it 
and make sure it's done. Anybody else is welcome to participate, of course. So what I suggest is that I'll put together a little bit like James put together a markdown document or a uh, or a Google document posted into this to Discord to see if anybody has any uh, other input for it like a week before. So like on the 20th, uh, it's due. See if anybody has it, and then we'll submit the PR onto the TOC on the 27th. That makes sense. Uh, any other suggestions on what we could do better there? Oops, nice. Now let's go on to the fun stuff. Joseph, uh, you did, you've been doing some work on Sawtooth Poet and what's going on there. Why don't you give a summary of where you've gotten to? You're on mute, Chris. Sorry, I was on mute. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I, the, the past, since we last met, I've been looking into um, Sawtooth Poet, mainly prioritizing the user issues that have been reported on the Discord. Um, and I've been, I, the kind of outcome is a PR that I've opened in the docs repo, which tries to point the, um, the guide for the creating a Sawtooth network guide, which is one that people seem to be having a lot of trouble with. Um, it currently points to the YAML file for Sawtooth Poet from uh, Maine, so it's uh, pointing to nightly images. And I found in my tinkering and sort of extensive going through that guide that I that it works. <laughs> it's annoying to say it works on my machine, right? But it it does work for me if I am pointing at the Chime images. So I've opened a PR suggesting that we point to the one point two version of of, uh, of things there in that particular case. Um, otherwise, I have run um, our uh, BTP CI checks on Sawtooth Poet, and they all passed no problem. Um, I've also um, used the P Poet consensus at the back end of, our, of one of our products, and, and that works fine as well. So um, that's kind of the current stage. And then there's sort of a further the other questions that we had about the algorithm and the build and stuff like that, that's a kind of longer term research project that I've got sort of on the back burner. So that's where we are with that. So are the CI builds on the um, the Sawtooth Me uh, site, are they actually still failing? I mean, or are they, so it runs fine on ours, but it's got to run on the main one. Is it just need to be kicked again and maybe everything's fine or is it do you not know that i don't know looks like the builds on this pr i just need to approve and run them on the and they should, and they should kick docs, off on the docs one yeah no i, I think uh just i'm thinking of the actual sawtooth boat i think that what kicked this off was we were looking at Gotcha. That Sorry. The CI builds on Sawtooth Poet were failing, but they look okay now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at the last meeting, people pointed out that they, they the CI checks seem to have been working working again. Is that right? right? Uh, uh, looks the last valid build was June 28th, 2023. So, so this morning, so at least it's running now. Okay, good. So it seems to be kicking up. Well, from this, it seems to be sort of occasionally failing the test, but otherwise going well for the past month or two. Past month. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, then me, the long running testing. So the this is currently it's got two parts. One is we're what I'm doing is basically putting together a, a good versatile Helm chart. Uh, for it, we actually already have it, but it's it depends upon some PPP custom stuff. So I'm pulling that out uh, and then putting in uh, a Helm test method so they can run. That'll make it uh, so that essentially you can run the test long running against any on any Kubernetes infrastructure, and it'll make it simple. And then we leave aside any of the Terraform stuff. Uh, make good progress on that. It's more about the the scripts that that we have to replace. There are fairly elaborate scripts for setting up Genesis uh, 
in doing a lot of fairly custom stuff that is only relevant to B2B. So that's that's what's got to be replaced. I might actually contribute uh, that basically simplified scripts that are, are exclusive Sculptooth only stuff uh, to, to help that out. Uh, but that's ongoing. The next item we did before, well, we, which we've had before was a description of the tool chain that seems to have lost enthusiasm. However, one of the things that keeps coming up in the documentation and the questions from the users is actually the Docker Compose version for two different reasons. One is that the uh, that there is actually a difference in the interpretation of the YAML, specifically around scripts that happens between one and two. And then, uh, but all of our Docker Composes are actually in uh, schema versions that can be theoretically can be interpreted by both versions. So what I'm, what I've been saying, recommending is actually the real problem we have here is making sure that the all the Docker composes work on any Docker. Uh, all the Docker compose YAMLs should work on either work only on the appropriate version of Docker compose or should work on all versions of Docker compose. The problem that shows up is that the Docker compose version two. Uh, changes the name of the containers, which throws basically a, a underscore turns into a dash. And that throws a wrench into a ton of the testing framework stuff on all of the uh, on all of the uh, Sawtooth core, all of them, basically every single thing, just because that run testing expects the names to be formatted a certain way and they're just formatted differently. Um, so we have two things I think we need to do. One is uh, update the Docker Compose schema versions where possible to make sure that they run only in the right version of Docker Compose and we throw an error. And longer term, update those run test programs so that they actually can handle the new names. It's a minor, but it's a minor technical change, but it's, it's all over the place, so it's kind of irritating. Um, so what I think there is the right thing to do here, which is I shouldn't ask for volunteers, but to, uh, open up an issue summarizing exactly that. Does that make sense? Or does everybody understand what I'm, I'm saying there? Uh, and then the rest of the tool chain, I think is in terms of documenting the rest of the tool chain, I personally think is less of an issue. It's, it's primarily about the Docker. Compose. Uh, any thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, so uh, James had uh, volunteered to do scan the documentation for the raft mentions of the raft consensus. Uh, I think James is off onto other things right now, so it's unlikely he's going to come back to it. But Ken, Mark, since you're already doing documentation scanning for other reasons. Can you take this on as well? I could do that, yes. So what? remember what the goal here is. What we're trying to do is, is uh, deprecate and eliminate the, the sawtooth raft. Right, so what okay. we're looking for is just cataloging all the references to sawtooth raft and making sure that we either remove them or note that it's deprecated, et cetera, so that we can clean up that. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. I guess Mark, if you want to summarize what you've gotten to and where you've where you're going through with the documentation. Yeah, I've been kind of well. That was an initial question, actually, of which documentation to look at, the Sphinx-based stuff in core or the other stuff in the docs repo. But I've been working through the 1.2 um, documentation in the docs repo. And um, but basically, um, it largely in order of how it appears. And I haven't noticed any big issues beyond things that we've already mentioned, like um, the, some of the poet stuff wasn't working for me, and there is a question about which versions of Docker Compose I'm meant to be using to get this stuff working. But um, and then I've 
I'm currently working through the architecture section. I've nearly done that too. And I'm not noticing yet any obvious or big issues apart from the ones you've mentioned. Though I suspect the real test will come once I get far enough to actually try using the documentation to make some simple client. But that's as far as I am so far, and I'm very happy to continue with that this coming month. I think it's, it's right to focus on the sawtooth docs thing. That was a good call way back when to move the docs out of the individual repositories because the docs were causing like dependency update problems were causing problems in the builds for everything else with the pain. It's best to keep it separate. So definitely keep focusing on that repository. Okay, great. Okay. Any yeah. other comments on that before we move on to the next one? I should I mentioned my plan is um, Joseph has also noted some issues that I, I want to note my issues before I look at what Joseph's noted, but separately in, in terms of what to do about them, my thoughts are to split them between things I can easily fix myself and things that seem quite simple things I can't fix myself that I plan to create a GitHub issue about, and then things that seem more worthy of discussion that I plan to raise in Discord. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Put them up in okay. different forums for different things. That's good. Okay. okay. Uh, with that, let's move on to Ryan Roberts Palooza. Uh, Ryan, this is around the uh, the first one was we were saying what the look of look at what the impact of just moving to Prost from the proto buff stuff in the Salt FDK Rust. What would it have? What would it, what would happen? What would it break? So. Yes, so we've done that um, for our for our own stuff, um, and it is purely a syntactic change. That's um, the the um, way we're using structures is equivalent. Um, so it re it's really going to depend on how people have um, how people have used uh, Protobuf um, in their application level code as to how difficult that might be. Um, if you use the uh, declarative um structural style to initialize things it's pretty clean it's cleaner than um, um and you, you no longer need to use into and things like that but if you've used it if you've done it in a more um imperative way and use the set methods then it's going to be a bit more painful but um there's um uh, how uh, e even in that case though it's um it's a mechanic say um it's a hands-on keyboard kind of process there's no real way for it to go wrong the types are equivalent and um rust will make sure you don't get it wrong um it'll ensure that fields are initialized when necessary and things like that so if we made this change it would be let's say to to people who depend upon the sdk if we made this change it would be a breaking change but or would it yeah it's certainly it's certainly a breaking change but it is um a, it's a syntactic breaking change largely it's um a relatively yeah. relatively easy one, uh, relatively easy one to deal with, and the types will, the types will lead you down the right path. It would be um, uh, not silent, is what you're saying, right? Not, not, si not, 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 not silent. Basically, just keep typing until the red squiggles go away. Kind of process. It shouldn't be too, shouldn't be too painful. So if I remember right, the issue here is about maintenance, right? The existing protobuf libraries aren't really maintained. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they have a. Uh, it's not. It's not officially marked. Um, it's not officially marked in Rust Circus deprecated, but they're called for maintainers, and there's been no contributions for, for some time. And um, Rust is what the. Um, it seems to be. It seems to. It seems to be where all the uh, where all the energy is at, and it's maintained by the Tokyo people. Okay, so. Uh... Then I guess the next thing to do is to actually just, just put together a PR uh, there that uh, justifies why we need to do it, right? Just in terms of description of what it is. Well, let's let's put the PR in, it and it will, and note that it will require a breaking change and stuff because that all have impacts into everything basically. Um. Well, it needs but to be noted. Uh. It depends if we're going to go about it. I think we're, I think the intent is to release um, an alternative sort of SDK, which is async sort of SDK, 
and then shim that into Sawtooth SDK where we can? I think we probably need to do both, honestly. The Just because there is kind of from the principle of change one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. I, I know the, the so changing the pros because we're dealing with the dependency issues, it introduces a breaking change for the uh, SDK, but the doing doing the Tokyo stuff, one, the Tokyo stuff isn't finished, right? Yeah. So the, the, but the other is that it's, uh, it's, it's biting off a lot more of the cake. Right? You're, committing yeah. to, you're committing to a re-architecture of your code at that point, yes. as opposed to just syntax change. Mm -hmm. right? Bigger, bigger break is what I'm saying. So I think I still I still think it's a, it's a good idea to do the pros change, particularly if it's just syntax update. Get the PR together, have it so that it, it runs through and and uh, passes checks. Then we can take a point of view and then have the PR there open and mergeable, if not necessarily merged. And then at the same time, let's do the Tokyo stuff. Why don't you update on the Tokyo stuff as well? Uh, yep. So Tokyo stuff we have. What looks like um, a version, uh, an asynchronous version of the Sawtooth SDK. Um, so it has uh, low level ZM key primitives, and it also has a high level abstraction for um, uh, correlating lock updates and um, user and, and custom Sawtooth events. Um, so that's at the state where we should hopefully be releasing it, um, uh, publishing it before the um, before before the next time we speak. It needs um, a fair bit more work on the um, on its um, unit testing. Um, we also have some enhancements to it over the um, uh, capabilities of the existing sort of SDK, in that it can connect to um, multiple validators and um there's a, a mechanism to be able to select which valid which valid which validator node you um actually want to try to send transactions to um so that's a kind of a pluggable strategy pattern but by default it works on um which one uh currently has the highest block number um so and that definitely that resolves a um a bunch of issues with the uh synchronous sort of fdk sdk if you're accessing it from um asynchronous code which we've we've actually had um endless issues with around um shutting it down shutting it down cleanly when it's running in, when it's running in reactors is uh quite quite painful um so it should hopefully resolve all that um and it should be a lot more lightweight there's no um synchronization there's no explicit synchronization required to in any of its um any of its code which is nice um and it all runs nicely without any additional threads so it should be should be a lot more a lot more lightweight to use um and to address the comment on the in the last meeting um we, we have completely removed any um references to open ssl in it as well which should make it a lot easier to compile to um to uh wasm or anything else that doesn't support open ssl uh, out of curiosity how are you able to remove the open ssl stuff how do you do the signing or is it just using for envelopes and stuff uh it's, yeah it's just using uh, it's um it's all just using uh k256 and um ah, right. Good. so yeah, it's pure rust um pure rust cryptography library Um, so first step on that is getting that published. When do you think you can get that published out? Um, once we have this, um, so, well, we can, we, we can, as soon as we have the, um, uh, uh, better testing for it, um, that should be publishable in the next, next, um, week or so. I can't imagine problem with that. Obviously, so even the work that you're doing with getting this stuff working, it's, it's probably better to get it sooner in the open rather than later so that folks can look at it, right? Because the plan is to get it open and see what ideas can either be taken over, directly merged into the SDK, or uh, incorporated, mm -hmm. basically open the discussion, right? Okay. The, uh, so that's, so 
like you, even the work you're doing right now, better to switch it to do it in the open on the repository, we'll publish it in there, we'll bring it up next time, basically do a start start a uh, start the discussion around the change because it's quite a it's quite a huge change. It's a very good change, I think, but it's you know it's quite a big one. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, particularly the um stuff around the our our um our ledger abstraction is um uh possibly more controversial than the lower level more more controversial than the than the lower level stuff although it's not necessary necessary to use it was um it was a common pattern we um we discovered in our in our integrations right that's that's the deal right is you also you never know what's controversial until you let other people look at it so. yeah that, that's what you mean. um Okay, well, that's the review. That was a bit long. Uh, I think we can close out some of the stuff and get more specific next time. Uh, but let's, any other questions of old stuff that I've maybe forgotten to include? I went through all the previous meeting notes. Uh, if not, let's go on to the housekeeping. Okay. So uh, just wanted to do in terms of housekeeping, there are, uh, Three, uh, two main things is CI jobs. I don't know of any jobs that need kicking from the CI to get them to rerun. If anybody disagrees with that, let me know or let the people know on Discord and get it kicked. The uh, PRs that are open, I went through and listed out all the ones we have. The, uh, the just going from bottom to top, there's the Java SDK updates. These are just depend about updates. Uh, they they actually need to get looked at real quick to see why it's failing. Uh, I will, I'm i volunteer for that, Mark. I know you're a Java guy as well. You take a look at it there. It's actually the same depend about update in two different spots. It's for some of the test programs. It's just, a, it's just a, I don't even remember what the dependency is, but it's pretty, pretty trivial stuff. The doo -doo -doo, Joseph, your PR, PR 200 on Sawtooth Docs, which is about the one to poet that still needs reviews. Mark, you have a PR on uh, SDK Rust, which is, this is the free after use. This looks like it's just a bug, right? Yeah, it's just a security. Um, it's a uh, for the previous version. The Rust sec. Yeah. It looks fairly uncontroversial, but that also needs a review. There are three in uh, Sawtooth Core. One is the just based GitHub build action, which I personally don't find controversial. Sean actually put it through, as I recall. Um, so, but that still needs review and put in. The other thing here, this is an update of the Sawtooth Poet thing. I think this is actually, this is the syntax thing, actually from the Docker Compose may actually throw in there but other otherwise doesn't look fundamentally particularly controversial um then the last one i think is maybe a little controversial which is what is this one this is the arm the build on arm dependencies i don't believe that, i think this builds but that thinks it's because it's not doing the build on uh x86 the I don't know. I don't think that this is. I'm surprised that it only took this to actually change because we've tried to do this before. I'm surprised that it took only these changes to get it to get the whole thing to build on uh, ARM. Because there's a lot of other support tools that aren't being touched here, and they definitely have problems. Um, yeah, I I, but, I believe the reason this PR is still open is Chris was planning to get back to it because it's not complete. Like you said, there's still issues. Yeah. It, it builds, but I don't think it actually runs at like locally on ARM. Right. Um, so I think Ryan, was, you were doing, go ahead, sorry. I, I was just going to like agree that I don't think this PR should be merged. Um, it should maybe be converted to draft if we can, just so we don't lose the work, but. Can you do that? I don't have to. I probably can. Yeah, maybe put it back on. Yeah. There you go. Um, but I was going to say, Ryan, you did. You've also got a PR in one of our repositories trying to do this this ARM build stuff as well, uh, um, just for comparison. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it is um, as far as I understand it, um, uh, purely to do with um, Python de Python dependencies and the um, them not being supported on that particular release of uh, uh, 
Dabby, on um. One of the things I notice when doing the overall rebuild the way we do it is that there are certain there are certain Python packages which actually are not published up on pip and they're only on uh, they're on the repo software with me as devs and I don't see how to build it. I ended up actually on our build I ended up reworking them. Uh, rather they are on pip but there's no actual published wheel for them so I had to go uh, fiddling around but what do I think? I think that yeah, the, the install software. installs a deb that's being pulled from repo Sawtooth me, and that deb is not actually being built by the Sawtooth core nor any of the other SDK packages. And I think it's actually the SEC two fifty six stuff for Python. Yep. Yeah, that is a, that 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 is an annoyance because it's uh, is that the one that's is where okay is that the one that's actually got the problem that isn't built for ARM or is it the pip level stuff? That is that 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 is an issue. Yes. Yeah, on that on on that version of um, I What would be better is if we could actually eliminate the Python dependency for that bit of code, right? Because it's because if you look at it, like the the Sawtooth core doesn't actually have all that much dependency outside of the SDK. And it might be worth going through and trying to eliminate those little bits of. Sawtooth SD, Python Sawtooth SDK dependencies in favor of what's going on in Sawtooth SDK Rust. And then maybe this becomes easier, the ARM and also just the sort of dependency spaghetti that we've got. Yeah, I guess there's no reason that couldn't just be re-exported from the Rust SDK and called from Python rather than Right. Well, in general, on the core, right, it's better to have a dependency on the, the Rust SDK than it is to have it on the Python SDK in terms of just qualitative judgment. Okay. Let's go with that. Let's maybe uh, we'll throw in the link to your uh, PR that you've got open on our side, which is not official, obviously, uh, just to compare and contrast. All right. I am now calling for. Uh, so that's the housekeeping and go through that. So we'll sort of, I'll, uh, basically every meeting I'll go through and do those uh, lists through. I don't know, we'll go through it as exhaustively. But first time is always the most expensive. But now on to community care and feeding. Thank you uh, guys who have been doing, uh, answering people's questions and stuff on Discord. I think everybody would agree that's helpful and it's always good. Uh, that said, I'm uh, not a fan of looking at issues, but uh, personally, which is why they tend to go long in the tooth. But I went through this time and looked at all the issue counts and go through it. And what I'm looking for are volunteers to help uh, triage and see what's going on with those issues. Um, there's quite a lot of them that are, if you take a look at them, some of them are sort of plans, ideas, some of them are bugs. Uh, most of them are not, uh, strictly speaking, bugs. Some of them are questions. Um, can I ask, actually, uh, I don't know if anybody wants to be particularly the point man for going through issues, but can we, we all sort of make an effort to at least comment on them and get familiar with the issues or some chunk of the issues, uh, so we can decide what to do with them. Does that make sense? Or is there a better way about that? My guys, in case my guys didn't, my wonder. I am actually volunteering you to go through the issues and see what's what. Understood. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Requests for the computer, requests from the community are orders for BTP. Uh, but I'd like to go through those. Uh, one of the things, though, is what we don't, uh, I think the, I haven't even looked at the, the, the Bugzilla that was on this for a while. Uh, I'm not sure we necessarily want to go back to the Bugzilla and using it because it was sort of intentionally moved around, moved away from a long time ago. So I'm thinking, why don't we just focus on the issues? In which case, then don't we need a set of templates and what? Or sorry, labels to triage them. And does anybody know a good example of them? I know like the Kubernetes core and things like that, for instance, use labels to triage issues and basically just are pretty native onto GitHub. Does anybody have any thoughts about that? We haven't to date done that any kind of labeling like that on uh, Sawtooth stuff. I am pro labeling. 
pro labeling. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, a, like I have a label for triage. This needs, somebody needs to go look through this. And then this is cool. This is dead. This is failed. That kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I did. Uh, well, there's a built-in ones. I went. I'll. If people could look around for a set of labels on it. There's there, there's a standard GitHub labels, but I don't think those are sufficient. But let's look around for a list of labels. We'll bat around on Discord what they should be. And then I don't think I can. I think they're controlled on GitHub, as I recall. So I don't think I can set them set them up. So Andy, hopefully you can help us out with that, and we'll just start using them. Starting on issues. I don't know so much on PR because we're not controlling builds on labels. Yeah, just a note for people who are going to be looking at issues. If I, Peter, or Sean added it, they're probably just stories that we had in the backlog on Jira mm -hmm. um, that we moved to different repos because we stopped using Jira. So. Right, I did remember that. Okay, so that's what I thought had happened. Good. Okay, and then that's and then those stories become things that people can pick up them or. Evaluate whether they're still applicable, and if they are, like, people can pick them up, right? Yep. Cool. Uh, notes. So, uh, any other ideas, contributions, things that people want to uh, throw out there? Once, going twice. Uh, and open discussion if anybody wants to talk about anything else they want to do. And the last is, uh, would anybody like me to run this meeting differently? I'm happy to take suggestions. Also, would anybody else like to run the meeting? Okay. Any other business? Going once, going twice. I will uh, update with my notes and uh, publish afterwards and let everybody, anybody can comment on the confluence about what's going on if they disagree about what's happening. Going once, going twice, three times. All right, thank you guys. Bye everyone.